so today I was on my way home and I don't think it's too risky to let you all know that um, very often my journey home involves me having to go through Brixton. I live in South London basically. And I got off the tube at Brixton and I was waiting for a bus and I looked across the road and heard and saw this. I've got no love for you man. You understand? So you, uh, you got to actively repent and come back to the Lord's statues and commandments. Other than that, you're going to be destroyed with the heat. It's that simple. There's no getting away from this judgment. Because this earth has been wicked, man. The wickedness of this earth has reached its pinnacle. It's got to the point where the Lord is just like, you know what, you guys go out there, prophesy, curse them out, and then I'll just destroy it with fire. And yeah, I wish I'd come set up the new kingdom and the heathens get put in slavery, man. And that's the way it's supposed to be, man. Because when we're in power, we ain't going to be having women out here dressed like sluts. We ain't going to have curly boys out here. We ain't going to have, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, little boys running around with their pants sagging. You understand? We ain't going to have these feminized men in our kingdom. We're going to have men of the law, man. And if you ain't a man of the law, because you're going to get crushed by that frequency that comes from the tabernacle of the man. Because, hey, you know what they say, man? Real no beats in the faith. You understand? So you're either down with a team or you're an outsider. So which side are you on? Are you on the Lord's side or are you with the heathen? Pick your choose. Those are black supremacists, basically. I didn't catch everything that they were saying. They made specific reference to these Caucasians and were chastising black men specifically for dating white women. And were referring to all white women as Becky, because obviously he has a Tumblr account and enjoys a good Tumblr white people joke. And in the video, you can see that he mentions uh, heathens, which are white people, by the way. And I think also what he mentions, I, I think, this is what he's saying, is that when black people take over, there'll be no uh, women dressed like sluts, and there'll be no girly boys or feminized men. So in addition to it being a racist tirade, it's also sexist and homophobic. Super. And you know, it was, um, it was interesting. It made me think a lot about the fact that, yes, as a white person, I don't actually enjoy hearing people say that I'm evil because of shit that people who look like me did. But the thing is, that's generally the extent to which I experience prejudice based on my race. As a white person, I have white privilege. And that insulates me from a lot of the really horrendous shit that non-whites have to put up with on a daily basis. The worst I have to put up with is people saying mean shit about me. And it's not nice, it isn't. Those guys are obviously prejudiced against white people and they're assholes, as well as being incredibly stupid. But that's it, that's generally the extent to which I will experience prejudice based on my race. I actually found it funny. I can just laugh about it. <laughs> oh well, wasn't that a gas? Back to my white life, which is almost entirely unencumbered by racial discrimination. Yay me. And as this was happening, I was standing at the bus stop and obviously people were, you know, noticing this. And Brixton is a very diverse area. So all the white people were obviously just basically ignoring it because they can. But there were a lot of non-white people standing there who were obviously also pretty perturbed by it. To the extent that there was a guy standing next to me. Black guy looked a little bit younger than me. And he turned to me and basically said, and I'm paraphrasing him here because I don't remember his exact words, but he basically turned to me and said, you know, I don't think all white people are racist. And I said, thanks, thanks, man. And he held up a necklace that he had on that had a pendant shaped like Africa. So obviously he's a black person who, you know, has thoughts and opinions about race. And he held it up at me and said, you know, just because I wear this doesn't mean I'm a nationalist, i.e. a black nationalist. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I know, man. And I said to him, they have the right to free speech, but I know it's a minority view. I know that not all black people think that all white people are racist. And then he just said, okay, man, enjoy the weather while you can, because it's really hot in London at the moment. And then he walked off. And after that, it struck me that <laughs> he will have actually been standing there. And he heard these people across the street preaching this idiotic ideology. And he must have thought to himself, oh, these people are giving us a bad name. I'd better talk to a white person about it and make them aware that not everyone <laughs> who looks like me thinks like this. And that is in and of itself fucked up. That not only do non-white people have to put up with a society that is saturated in racism and white supremacy, they also have to put up with other black people who are morons. And they worry that they give them a bad name to the extent that they have to find the nearest white person and reassure us so that we don't get upset. That's so fucked up. I've heard racism against non-whites quite a lot in Brixton actually. I remember once I was coming out of the tube late at night 
And since the O2 Academy is just around the corner, when there are big concerts playing there, very often there'll be people selling tickets right at the entrance to Brixton Station. And one particular night, Emily Sande was playing there. And there was a white guy at the top of the stairs and he was holding some tickets and he was saying, Emily Sande, Emily Sande. And as I was walking past him, I overheard him say under his breath, Sandy coloured. And I just went, <gasps> but it was so busy that I literally couldn't turn around to say anything to him and I was just whisked away by the crowd. There was another time as well, pretty much in the exact same place, there was a table set up outside Brixton Tube Station by an anti-racism uh, group. And they literally just had some posters up about racial equality and anti-racism and they had some kind of petition going. And I wasn't gonna sign it, if I'm being honest. I was kind of in a rush. But as I was walking past it, this white guy came off of the tube, saw it, and then started just going nuts very sarcastically going oh yeah because all white people are bad white people are awful black people are the best white people are so bad and when i saw this because it wasn't quite as busy that night i flipped him off and i called him a cunt to his fucking face and i signed the petition and then i walked my white ass to the bus the point i'm making is you hear prejudice in and around our society everywhere. Most of the time, it's racism against non-whites. But on the few solitary occasions that you actually do encounter people who are fully prejudiced against people who look like me, that's pretty much the extent to which I experience prejudice based on race. People saying mean shit about me that I can just ignore if I want to or even laugh about it. I am never, ever worried that I'm going to encounter serious discrimination based on my race. The worst that can happen to me is some idiots dressed in some fucking weird tunics preaching literal conspiracy theories. And I'm so protected from it that even non-whites around me feel the need to tell me that they don't feel that way. To put my mind at ease. I don't know what else to say. This is all very masturbatory in some sense. But, you know. Fuck racism, right? Fuck racism. <laughs> <laughs>